I'm Allison Ritchie, and my father has had a heart condition since pretty much as long as I can remember. My name is Linda Ritchie. I'm a wife, a mother, and a businesswoman, and my husband needs a new heart. That's, uh, that's some circumstances when the good news is you need a new heart, and they're going to cut you open and put one in you. I mean, I've had a decent life, but when you come to a point where it's, you're looking at the very end of your life, uh, I don't see how you can't help wanting more. I do not want to go out yet. Being diagnosed with heart disease in my mid-40s, I knew I had to do something physically to maintain my health, and yoga just fit me perfectly. And I liked both the physical and the spiritual aspect of it. Waist turns forward, you're sitting on this rump, and the arms come up. I saw him lean into yoga and meditation and personal fitness, which was of course inspiring. But then at the age of 70, to end up on a heart transplant list is pretty impressive. I strongly believe that my subsequent 25 years of practicing yoga and teaching um, put me in a physical state that at 70 years old, I was able to qualify for a heart transplant. The major pitfall for heart transplant is still pr primary graft dysfunction, what we call PGD. It's basically when um, the heart just, for all intents and purposes, doesn't work. It's not beating strong enough to sustain uh, the new recipient. So a, a huge amount of work has gone into figuring out, okay, what are some of the risk factors? What are some things we could do to mitigate the chance of getting PGD? making sure you don't put in too small of a heart for the recipient, to making sure the heart's well protected while it's being transported, to um, a variety of other risk factors that have been are pretty well studied. You want all possible advantage when facing something like that. And I felt that the team I had would give me that. The heart that became available uh, was not local. so. The concern out of the gates was, okay, our ischemic time is going to be kind of close to that borderline area, you know, range of four hours or so. So every possible advantage. What could we do to minimize the risk of primary graft dysfunction? Because the heart was available. Granted, it wasn't as close as we'd like, but we said, all right, we got to we got to go for it, and we're going to use the Sherpa Pack as a way to really push the envelope and make sure we do everything humanly possible to make sure the heart is A-OK -okay when we bring it back and so would it. The standard way of organ transplant transportation has been to put the organ in a cooler on ice, like a bait box. I found out that my heart was transported in a new device called the Sherpa Pack, which is a constant temperature fluid that assures that the heart is in the best possible condition it can be in when, when it arrives for transplant. The main difference between transporting in the conventional fashion on ice in a cooler versus transporting it with a Sherpa pack is that in a cooler full of ice, you have no way of controlling what parts of the heart are cooled and how cool they get. Conversely, what the Sherpa pack does is it enables uniform cooling. And secondly, it ensures that the cooling is not excessive. So you don't get that freezer burn, that hardened muscle tissue that you, that you can occasionally see uh, when you cool these hearts the conventional way in a cooler of ice. Uh, I got you. The okay. adventure begins. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of come at you like a pit crew. Okay, bye. What did she say? She said the, that they put the lines in him. He was only awake for one of it and that he was heavily sedated. And... Um, the heart is above Arkansas right now. They were able to tell us that the heart was over Arkansas, which I later found out was because the transport device had a GPS. I like the fact that you could track it, so we're communicating, we know exactly where the heart is, 
how, how long it's been being uh, preserved for, so that helps, uh, again, streamline our timing, making sure we're, we're getting ready with the recipient at the precise time so that we're ready to, ready to roll once the donor heart comes into the operating room. Once we sewed the heart in, the heart took off like a, like a locomotive. It did, it did wonderful. It really was uh, a successful transplant. Really, the two years leading up to this main event of the heart transplant, I started to worry about the longevity of my dad's condition, and um, he wasn't the same spirited, energetic person that I had grown up knowing in spite of his heart. And coming out of this heart transplant, even six months later, we were out on a river canoeing together. He has a very positive attitude and he takes good care of himself. So he wants to make the most of the years he has left. So keeping up with him is going to be challenging, I think. As a film producer, I've been active all my life. I'm always looking for a new adventure. To be given the extension of life is an incredible gift. I'm especially grateful to live in a time when it's possible and no longer experimental. And I'm grateful to the incredible transplant team, the technology, the caring, to the donor and his family. And I want to be worthy of that and will strive to be as good a human being as I can.